MCG, a mecca for Australian sport. It was originally called Richmond Paddock and in 1856 hosted the first cricket match between New South Wales and Victoria. Then 13 years later, Australia's first bicycle race was held here. In 1877, the very first test match was played right here. And we beat the Poms by 45 runs. A year later, the MCG was the site of Australia's first tennis match. And in 1956, the world's eyes were focused here for the Melbourne Olympics. Tonight, we're going to open the This Is Your Life book and look back at some of our sporting greats, athletes, cricketers, tennis players, and many others who have been honoured. And you're going to meet some surprise sports stars too. But first, let's take a look at how we've surprised our sports icons over the years. G'day, Dawn. Oh, I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> you can't get away from me. Dawn Fraser, this is your life. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Great, we've never met. Roger Clemson, Roger how are you? Have a good game? Yes, very good, thank you. Thank you. Well, Greg Chappell, just to finish your day off, Greg Chappell, this is your life. Betty, I think you know why I'm here. Because <laughs> Betty Cuthbert, <laughs> this is your life. And now moving along to stall number three. Well, the first, I think the best T-Roll I've ever was playing was Love to All. He was in this box. I was surprised in this box, Tommy. <laughs> How do you do? Mike Willisie. Tommy Smith. If you could go as fast as he was, you wouldn't have any good Tommy Smith, this is your life. <laughs> Hi, Melinda. Hi. Melinda Gainsford, oh this my is God. your life. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Hello. Thank you. The world's number one golf. <laughs> Greg Norman. This is your life. Congratulations. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, this was going to be a backhand smash. It'll have to be a straight serve now. John Newcomb, this is your luck. Thank you. Tonight, some of our great sports champions. We look back at the fun, the mates, the memories and the tears when This Is Your Life surprised them. And our first special guest tonight won Wimbledon in 1967, 70 and 71. He was twice ranked number one player in the world and is now captain of the Australian Davis Cup team. Please welcome John Newcomb. What do you remember most about the night we surprised you? Yeah, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's a shock. You, you stand there and you, you see Roger coming up to me and I, what's, what's this for on a, on a tennis court? And he's walking out there and, and you think, uh oh, I've been got here. <laughs> and you had no idea? Uh, no idea at all. No, it was a very well held secret. It's amazing how they can do that and then you start to worry about your family. I mean, if they can keep that from me, what else are they keeping from me? <laughs> Well, well, in fact, we've got a few clips from, uh, from your big night. And when you mention uh, family, I tell you, who needs enemies when you've got family and friends like yours? Have a look at this. He wouldn't play without his little white peak cap. John, that of, <laughs> that of course is your first mixed partner, your sister Rosalind Heilman with her husband Terry and with them, your younger sister Sue and her husband, Bob Fraser. <laughs> Okay, Rosalind, tell us more about John and his cap. <laughs> well, Roger, John had a real phobia about this cap and wouldn't go on the court without it. Anyhow, the boys started to tease him and hide this cap. <laughs> 
So mum eventually weaned it off him by saying, if you ever play at Wimbledon, <laughs> you can hardly be seen in this little white peak cap. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you remember about John? Well, Roger, John as a big brother was a terrible tease. So tonight I'd like to get my own back on national television oh. <laughs> and tell a little story about, uh, do you remember when you were about eight and you went through Not a... wetting the bed, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare tell that. <laughs> uh, no, no, you went through a stage of being scared of the dark. <laughs> and uh, it used to bribe me into walking down the long hallway to the bathroom and I'd have to sit outside and wait till you're finished and then walk <laughs> back with you. I never let her in though. <laughs> I was going to say, does she still do that job? <laughs> <laughs> and here right now is one of your greatest rivals, the top ranked player in the world, winner of the Australian indoor title, none other than Jimmy Connors. <laughs> bit about you myself, a little white cap and used to wet your bed. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been trouble for your mother. For <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I had the uh, good fortune of winning a tournament in uh, Maui a couple weeks ago and, and Nuke presented me the check and he comes down after the, the match is over and says, uh, well, you're buying dinner for everybody. And I turned around and looked at him and says, Christ, I can barely keep you in beer, let alone dinner. <laughs> what do you think about at least Tony Roach went out of his way to explain you were only a bit elated one night in Switzerland. I was playing a tournament in Gestard one year and I uh, had to play the final the next day and uh, John, he must have had a rough match the, that night because he got in rather late. But what apparently happened was that uh, we were in room 327 <coughs> and uh, he gets off on the second floor and goes to room 227. <laughs> And the door happened to be open, and he didn't want to wake me up, so he goes in, he cleans his teeth in the pitch black, <coughs> goes to get into bed, and of course somebody's in the bed. <laughs> and uh, he switches on the light, and of course he's obviously in the wrong room, but uh, I don't think he had anything to drink that night. I think it no, was just much. a rough match. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here's the late, great Lou Hode, concerned you might be getting a bit dry out there talking to Roger. <laughs> that beer looked a bit flat to me. Yeah, it is about half full of vodka. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I got, I got it halfway down and realised, uh, you know, that Lou had spiked me. And, and finished the show okay? Uh, well, uh, about, you know, vodka it took a while. Probably after the show, I think I was a little hazy. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> now, someone very wise once said, to have a successful marriage, you only need to remember two things. Your anniversary and your anniversary. <laughs> now, let's see how you did, Nuke. I hope it was 20th of February. Oh! 21st? Well done! Second hit! What year, John? <laughs> huh? What year? Uh, give me time to think of that. 19... <laughs> 1966. Right! Very good, John. <laughs> You certainly can't blame wives uh, for getting a bit stroppy when you don't remember uh, your anniversary, John. Well, the problem is that a mother's birthday is on the 20th of February and our anniversary is on the 21st of February, so... I don't know which one I should remember. Yeah, yeah OK. It's <laughs> her mother's birthday or our anniversary. <laughs> she, is she still talking to you? Oh, yes. Yeah, no, we're still married. We're, we're uh, 30 years. Fantastic. Now, so and, and uh, it gets better every year. That's great. That's great. And, of course, uh, on This Is Your Life, it would be almost impossible without partners. They're the ones, as you know, John, now, who really help us out to put the surprise and the show together. Without them, we'd never get hold of those embarrassing nude baby shots. And all those other moments that we'd rather forget. He wants to get to Ted Dexter's golf handicap of two. He's trying to bring it down by one stroke a month. The lady who worries that you may be very angry with her about tonight, your wife, Daphne. 
Cricket legend Richie Benno wasn't too sure what was going to happen on his big night. Look how he greets his wife after they got him. She forgiven? I'll talk to her later on. Before you leave for France, you And champion jockey Roy Higgins proves his devotion to the sport of kings when his wife reveals what happened on their wedding day. You ran out of the church to hear the last grace. Roy, she managed to keep the secret about tonight, your wife Janine and children Nicole and Martin. <laughs> A little butch. Janine, Roy didn't really run out of the church like that, did he? Well, it was a close finish. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we were married very quietly, with just a few of our close friends and um, family, of course. And as we were leaving the church, out the door we come, and he dashes off to the car radio to uh, listen to the race to see if his favourite horse at that time, Aquanita. And he won. didn't win. I don't know how I won, but he did win that day. I know, he's never forgiven me for that. <laughs> That's a bit rough, leaving your wedding for uh, a horse race, huh? No, I wouldn't leave for a horse race, maybe a game of tennis or something. Right. <laughs> and then back in trouble again. Yeah, back in trouble again. Now, John, you've got a new project going with uh, a bunch of Australian sports legends, haven't you? Yes, I've got a marketing company you know, here in Australia and as a, a program that we're doing with that, uh, we started a company called Corporate Gold and it's uh, involving all the gold medalists from the, from the past. That Australia's won something like about 73 gold medals over the years and a lot of those uh, that have won gold medals are real heroes but uh, you know they could do with the extra dough and there's the some that are more famous than others that have their own agents but there's a lot of them that don't and we're getting them all together with the approval of the Australian Olympic Committee and it's, it's going to be a source of income for them to go out and talk to corporations and, uh, and, and do business uh, like that. They can make some money and everybody loves to hear how did you win your gold medal? Mm. You know, where did you start? And every story, almost without fail, it's been that dedication of that person and the, and the belief in themselves. Uh, and I, I just love hearing the stories of how they went about, you know, uh, finally achieving a gold. And when they get to that race or whatever it is and they won the gold medal, uh, you know, it it's just must be an unbelievable feeling. And, and it is just Olympians? No Grand Slammers? No, 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 no Grand Slammers. Just uh, Olympians. Yeah, oh, it's a great idea, actually. And I hope yeah. it goes very well. I'm sure it will. And thanks, uh, John, for being with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, John Newcomb. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Tonight we pay tribute to all those sportsmen and women who have trained and strained to win for the country they love. But look behind every sports star and you'll find a mum and dad just waiting to spill the beans on This Is Your Life. Here's Jack Brabham's mum and dad talking about young Jack. May was Jack always fascinated by cars? Yes, he absolutely loved them. And he get into the car if it was at the side of the house and just sit there by the hour and play with the wheel until one day he started it up and he wasn't even old enough to look over the dashboard and put it through the lattice fence. <laughs> but uh, he knew where to go when he was in trouble. <laughs> where did you go when you were in trouble? Um, well, in those days I used to go straight up a pepper tree. <laughs> <laughs> and sit up there until the uh, you know, place cooled down. <laughs> Champion sprinter Betty Cuthbert won three golds at the 1956 Olympics and another gold at the 64 Olympics. Here, her mum and dad talk about Betty's childhood days. What do you know about her that you can tell us that the public doesn't? I can always remember as far back, Betty was always fond of animals. She was always interested in plants, birds, and love of nature. Uh, I remember once when we were out in the paddocks, Bet brought, uh, caught a little yellow robin. She brought it up to me. She says, look what I've caught. Do you remember that, Bet? I remember catching lots of things. Even that rabbit that John said, there's a rabbit running around the back, and he said, you won't catch it. And I waited and waited under the tree, and went in a hole, and when it came out, I grabbed it. <laughs> 20 years on, and she's courageously battling MS. Betty recorded this special message for another great sprinter, Melinda Gainsford. Melinda, I'm sorry I'm unable to share this occasion with you. I've enjoyed following you for a number of years and I'm thrilled that Jackie has been your coach as we once trained together. Congratulations on what you have done so far and I wish you much success in the future. 
especially in Atlanta. God bless you. And I said no, and of course the... the Here's Melinda talking fine. about getting some bad news well, while she's at the Barcelona Games. And, um, and then Mum said, look, honey, you know, I've got cancer, and I, of course I'm just bawling my eyes out. And um, she said to me, you know, it's OK, I'm going to lose a bit of my hair, but that's all right, I can cope with that, and, you know, I'm going to have chemo and all this sort of stuff, and she was explaining it to me, but I'll never forget hanging up the phone and then just having to cope with it, walking around Barcelona by myself for two hours trying to cope with it. And I thought, just imagine how Mum would feel if I won. And you did. And Here's another big-hearted athlete, champion long-distance swimmer Des Renford. When his brother suddenly dies, Des takes over responsibility for the family. Now, Jean, that must have been a very difficult period for you because um, apart from the death of Des's mother and father and your husband, you also lost your baby son about that time. That's right, four months before my husband. But. I can only say that when I needed help, Des was there. He's been a tower of strength to myself and family over the years. And he's given them the guidance and the help that they've needed. Well, here they are today. And uh, I can only say that he's given them the love that they've needed from their father. Now, when the This Is Your Life crew starts snooping around, researching someone, even we get surprised at what we find. Who would have thought that an Aussie golfer would have a mate in the White House? This is your life, Greg Norman. I don't know if this is a roast or a tribute, but I do know something about Greg Norman. And I know the respect that all sportsmen in America have for this man. Indeed, some of us would like to see him transfer his citizenship to the United States. Impossible, though, because Australia's never had a more patriotic son. I salute him. I hope you know that I love your country. I hope you know that I'm familiar with your love of sports. And I hope you know that I have great respect and admiration for the shark. One of a kind, a great leader in golf, and a warm human being whom Barbara and I are proud to consider friend. You've got a wonderful life, Greg. Keep it up. And who do you reckon is Des Renford's famous cousin? They thought the wild one needed somebody like Des to keep an eye on him. Cousin and close mate, Johnny O'Keefe. Johnny, what did your parents want Des to do? Well, I'd been going through quite a few sort of traumatic uh, times and uh, they thought, or my father thought, that uh, Des was, should be a sort of a, a stabilising influence on me. Tennis champ Tony Roach has a mate in famous Broadway playwright and screenwriter Neil Simon. Now, there is an odd couple. The thing that impressed me most about you is, is the way you, you took defeat. And it was very much uh, in the same spirit that I've seen in all, all of the Australian players. Um, the game was over, you lost the match, and you put your arms around your buddies and said, well, that's it, let's forget about it, and let's go have a drink. And you had 67 beers, as I recall. And then you did something I never saw anyone do in my life. You ate your tennis racket. <laughs> Arthur Tunstall. And years before he learned to do bad jokes about Kathy Freeman and Lionel Rose, Here's Arthur Tunstall doing more ethnic impressions for Aussie boxing champ Rocky Gatellari. What's this bit about Mr Tunstall on my homily? What's that mean? Well, it was a little story that um, at one stage I let Rocky go out for a, a night and uh, he evidently didn't get anything to eat. And we were used to eating in the village and uh, oh, the first thing I heard the next morning was, Where's a Mr Tunstall? I'm a hungry! <laughs> and he's never forgotten it. <laughs> That's a, a recent poll found that our most recognised, respected and loved Australian is our next guest. She's a true sports legend. She's won gold in three successive Olympics and her world records stood for years. She was surprised by This Is Your Life back in 1979. I thought it was the cops raiding my little card game. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dawn Fraser. Now, you had absolutely no idea that This Is Your Life was 
coming? No, not at all. In fact, um, I think for quite a number of years I, I tried to stay away from it because, um, I don't know, I, 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 I could see the others, this is your life, and I, I knew that I'd get extremely emotional when it uh, was happened. And, so you, and you were playing cards the night the crew actually arrived? Yes. So what, what did you think? Well, actually I was sitting in the corner and uh, the next minute I saw my whole hotel light up with these huge lights. And I went, oh my God, it's a raid. <laughs> so I was sitting, I was sort of locked in the, in the corner and I just said to the guys I was playing with, this is a raid, I've got to go. I can't be caught playing cards. And I got up and I, I sort of pushed, the, the hotel was absolutely packed. And you bolted. I bolted, I we, bolted. We, we've got that, let's just have a quick look. It's Friday night here in Birchgrove Road, Balmain. Only 200 yards up the road is the house where our guest of honour was born. But now she owns this hotel, the Riverview. She's left the pub. <laughs> Where's she going? There she is. <laughs> now, this is where he catches you here, right? Yes. <laughs> Which is sort of uh, just around the corner. Is that a bottle in your hand? Uh, it was glasses I picked up to say that I was outside picking up glasses. <laughs> <laughs> always thinking, huh? Yeah, always. Oh, always thinking. <laughs> and actually the man that caught me was one of the guys I was playing cards, cards with and he had set the whole thing up with uh, my business partner in the uh, hotel. And I bet he won too on the night. He did. <laughs> I had to leave my money on the table. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a little bit more from your big show. Let's have a look. That night was also very special because it saw three world champions together. Dawn, two great friends, the one and only Herb Elliott and the Lithgow Flash, Marjorie Nelson Jackson. I heard, first of all, you and Dawn, I know, became great friends over the years, haven't you? We have indeed. Well, <laughs> Without the bum fluff. <laughs> Here's great butterfly champion Kevin Berry. Maybe it should read great kissing champion. <laughs> Question says, what's all this about kissing for the cameras? Roger, um, between 1962 and 1964, Dawn and I used to swim uh, 100 metres. Dawn swimming 100 metres freestyle, myself swimming 100 metres butterfly. And on many, many occasions, we both broke the world record for 100 metres on that Within night. Within half an hour. One Within hour. half an hour, yes. <laughs> and we got the inevitable question posed for the, the press cameras and the big kiss. That wasn't long enough. <laughs> this, Would this you please just answer the question? <laughs> and while you and Kevin can't keep your lips apart, Roy Higgins was trying to fight off long-time mate Billy Pyers. <laughs> now, over the years, This Is Your Life has found it's always fascinating to reunite old enemies and rivals. People who stood opposite each other in different corners. And Dawn, in your case, both sides of the law. And here you are again, about to be reunited with the Japanese policeman who arrested you for stealing the Olympic flag. Remember this? Did you have a bit of sake after the show, perhaps, with the Yes, the we policeman? did, actually. Did yes, you? Yes. Everything was on good terms? Oh, it was, he, was, he was fantastic. Um, in fact, he was the one that got me out of being arrested. Because in Japan, I mean, souveniring is not a word. It's stealing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right. it's a criminal offence. So I was very lucky that he was a very understanding um, detective. But um, the thing was... Um, he didn't, for the first few moments of my being arrested, he didn't believe I was Dawn Fraser. And it took me quite a while to convince him that it was me, you know, swimmer. And all he kept, all he kept on saying was, Oh, no, she wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would, I'm saying. <laughs> well, while we're talking about sparring partners, have a look at this one. Here's another pair of old rivals, veteran boxing champ Vic Patrick meets the man he beat to win the title 30 years before. 
the great Tommy Burns. If you'd have got one you know, minute to take you, advantage of me, you'd have... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Take it till later, will you? <laughs> but you, you were sadistic. You if see? you'd have got one bit, you'd have done that. Look, one night, one night I'm going to get up and knock you out. If you got Look, up did you see that. me trying to get up there? I know you I'm did. I'm glad I didn't make it. You've been doing it now for 31 years. Okay, yeah. fellas, hold. End of the round, right? <laughs> what I mean? Aussie Rules legend Ron Barassi got the shock of his life when they reunited him with the New York cop and footballer who broke his nose in a demo match in America. I haven't a great deal of pleasure telling you about that because I did have a broken nose out of the encounter. <laughs> but uh, it was a rough game. During one altercation I happened to be sat down on my backside by a, well, a right cross to the nose to be quite frank. And when I looked, I got up uh, off the ground, wiped the tears from my eyes, uh, and I, I couldn't find this fellow. He'd gone off the, the field with a broken thumb. And this, was, <laughs> this was this guy, uh, a narcotics detective, Brendan, Brendan Tumulty. Brendan Tumulty. And if you've got him here, I'll. You know, well, now, hang on. <laughs> now, just a second. Now, that punch in the nose that you received in that game became something of a legend back here in Australia. So we thought that we would bring the legend right here. From New York, former detective, one of the great fighting Irish, <laughs> Brendan Tamalte. <laughs> Here's our great boxing champ, Lionel Rose, who was the very first Australian to be honoured on This Is Your Life back in 1975. Lionel's about to be surprised by the man he knocked out to win the championship, fighting Harada. Another great champion, Johnny Famishon. And Australia's first world champion, Jimmy Carruthers. Then world record holder and Olympic gold medalist, Herb Elliott is joined by two rival 1500 metre champions, Ron Delaney and Peter Snell. And this is certainly a great moment, ladies and gentlemen. We have three consecutive 1500 metre Olympic gold medalists. Ron Delaney, Melbourne. <laughs> Herb Elliott, Rome. And Peter Snell, Tokyo. <laughs> Dawn, thank you very much for being with us tonight and sharing your time. We, we appreciate it. Bring back a few memories. Oh, it does. I mean, it's lovely. I, I know I've met all of those sportsmen. I think that's, um, you know, when, when you showed Des and, you, and Johnny O'Keefe and, you know, the people that have passed on in your life. It's, um, it's amazing. And I thank, um, I thank Australia for being like that. And, and it's great that we still have this sort of footage available to us. Yeah. So we can go back and have a look at them. Sure is. Ladies and gentlemen, Dawn Fraser. Thank you. Some sports people often become superstitious about their success. There was John Newcomb and his little white hat, and here's another strange little ritual that This Is Your Life dug up. One of the great it's world champ Sir Jack Brabham again being greeted by the man who built his winning Cooper Climax cars, John Cooper. What was that role about? Well, that's a long story. I'm jumping a bit, actually, because um, once I said to Jack, um, if ever we win a Grand Prix, I'll loop the loop. And when we won our first Grand Prix, he said, well, what are you doing? You didn't loop the loop. And he made me do that after every race, actually, if he won. <laughs> For absolute, uncontrollable joy and emotion, Rocky Gattelari scores a perfect 10. Although Rocky knows nothing about it. Rocky, here's a double surprise for you. From London, an old mate you haven't seen for 11 years. That's right, writer Uli Schmetzer. You haven't grown, have you? <laughs> Nothing like Italian emotions, huh? <laughs> well, tonight we have another special guest. We saw him surprised on This Is Your Life earlier. He comes from a long line of baseballers, but is much better known for his cricketing career. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former Australian cricket captain Greg Chappell.
<laughs> now, what's this about baseball in the family? Well, we were a keen baseball family as well as a cricket family. Uh, my grandfather, whilst he played cricket for Australia, represented South Australia at baseball. My father played baseball for South Australia. Ian represented uh, South Australia at baseball and was chosen in an Australian baseball team before he played cricket for Australia. And now um, I have a younger son who's uh, a baseballer, so it seems to have stuck more than the cricket. Four generations. Four generations. Wow, yeah. wow. And, and how genuinely surprised were you when This Is Your Life caught up with you? Absolutely. I mean, I think, I, I think when you look at the, the clip we saw earlier, I was trying to ignore the fact that Roger was coming and hope that he was going to talk to someone else. And that was at the 18th? That was at the 18th, thankfully. Mind you, it might have been better if he'd got me at the 9th. <laughs> well, at least not the 19th. Well, that uh, could have been worse again. Exactly, because Ian was here, of course. Do you remember what... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's a> good, <laughs> nice one, Greg. Um, do you remember what your mum said on the show that night about you and Ian as young cricketers? Well, I could think of a few things, but I don't recall exactly what she said, no. Have a look at this. Now, Jim, with a husband and three cricketing sons, you must have had your hands full. We're well aware of that. But what comes to mind in particular about Greg? Well, mostly the washing and... Uh... <laughs> but I did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. That'll be the day. Look at this. Greg's wife tells us how they met. Judy, did you really write him a fan letter? I didn't, Roger, no, but uh, my sister did, Elizabeth, and she's it's four years fault. younger than I. It is her fault, isn't it? And uh, that's why I think Greg might have some advice for budding uh, sportsmen, uh, perhaps not to reply to a female fan mail. It sort of did the trick. It did. It certainly did. But, well uh, and truly, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, you were Australian captain through, I think, 48 tests. Mm -hmm. Who would you say was the best bowler you ever played with? Dennis Lilly, without even a second thought. Dennis um, was a tremendous athlete, great determination, made himself into a, into a great bowler. As a young man he was a tear away fast bowler but after his back injury he came back and he made himself into the, the greatest. Just a great competitor. Hello Rod. Hello Dennis. I've been waiting a long time to meet you. Congratulations on a fantastic effort. Right now we are on national television and Dennis Lilly, this is your life. Dennis, throughout your career, two men have been closest to you than any others. Rod Marsh and former This Is Your Life guest of honour, Ian Chappell. Come on, 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 yeah, they used to be sore when he was quick, but he's not quick anymore. <laughs> Any comment on that? He's right, <laughs> as usual. Well, I've got to say to you, pal, is, uh, you're number one as far as I'm concerned, and uh, if I ever had to choose a team, your first pick. Thanks, Thanks for the memories, man. And here's how This Is Your Life host Digby Wolf surprised your brother, also Australian captain, Ian Chappell, at the airport. <laughs> Ian Chappell? Yeah. I hate to tell you this, but you've just been clean bowled. Right now you're on national television, and if you look to your right, you'll see why. Ian Chappell, this is your life. Here's another terrific cricket memory when Richie Benno is greeted by the greatest cricketer of all, the mighty Don. As a selector and as administrator, of course, I was very closely in touch with him throughout his career and privileged to be one of those who gave him an opportunity in the game of cricket, which is vital, of course, to any young player. We always knew he had the potential and ultimately this was revealed and is shown in the figures at the end of his career. But Richie's great value, it doesn't only come out in figures, it comes out in his personality and the way he captained the team. And those of us who saw that marvellous tied test match in Brisbane know how his attitude contributed so much to it. We think of other individual incidents such as his uh, fast century in Kingston, Jamaica, the incident of bowling Peter May round his legs at Manchester, the magnificent catching of Cowdery at Lords, and I could go on with many others. But above everything else, I'm proud to be associated with Richie because of his attitude to the game of cricket, the way he's worked and dedicated himself in the interest of the game, 
and altogether, I think Australia should be proud of one of its greatest sporting sons. And after Sir Donald's, here's a slightly shorter message to Ian Chappell from the great Viv Richards. Don't miss it. Good luck, Ian. <laughs> Man of many words. <laughs> You could do with a new uh, speechwriter, couldn't you, do you think? But when you could bat like that, you didn't have to say very much. It didn't much. matter. No, OK, <laughs> fair enough. Greg, you've seen a lot of changes in cricket. Uh, first World Series, then Day Night. Yeah, there's a few, uh, few more to come too, Mike. We're uh, just in the process with working with the Australian Cricket Board on uh, uh, Super 8s, which is a, an 8-a-side, 14-over competition which will be played off-season, modified cricket for the off-season, and uh, there'll be plenty of excitement in that. And so that's just part of the evolution of this game of cricket that um, you know, started so many years ago um, between Australia and England and has developed uh, right around the world and with this uh, eight aside competition we'll see cricket played in Asia. And will that be faster than, obviously faster than one day? Well it'll be more like uh, the last 15 overs of a, of a one day game, getting, uh, you know, getting the run scored quickly, I mean you'll see scores of uh, between 150 and 200 in 14 overs and there'll be plenty of excitement. Thanks very much for being with us tonight. Pleasure Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Chappell. Here's one of our greatest ever tennis champions, Ken Rosewall, with Roger Clemson. What do you think makes a tennis player, Ken? Is it the determination to win, the love of the game, a bit of both, or what? Well, a combination of, of, uh, of everything. I mean, all of the fine gentlemen sitting here uh, that have kindly come out to, uh, to be here this evening, uh, you know, all have the same desire for competition, love of the game, and dedication, and... Uh, uh, you know, the will to win. I mean, that's, that's the, the mark of, of the top players, not just in tennis, but in any, uh, any particular sport. Now just before we go, here's a few more surprises for you. Legendary Australian swimming coach Forbes Carlyle was honoured on This Is Your Life, and in the audience was his latest water baby. And guess who that was back in 1978? Where are you? Yep, that's little Lisa Forrest. <laughs> and here's what This Is Your Life does best, family. Boxing champion Johnny Famishon gets a real lump in his throat when his family greet him on the show. Elise, was it hard keeping tonight a secret? Oh, it's terrible. It was just terrible. Why did you keep Kelly here? <laughs> did the, did the kids know? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. And finally, watch how renowned racehorse trainer TJ Smith gets emotional when This Is Your Life surprises him by flying his daughter Gay all the way back from London. She's walking right through those doors to join you now. John Newcomb, this is your life. Dawn Fraser, MBE, this is your life. Greg Chappell, captain of Australia, this is your life. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. And please thank our special guests, John Newcomb, Dawn Fraser and Greg Chappell. From all of us here at This Is Your Life, good night.